Hey guys, welcome back to Ceramic Pro's mini series, Detailing 101. Today, we're gonna to do the fourth episode and it's gonna be all about polishing. The first thing we're gonna dive into here is the tools. So there's really two main types of polishing tools. There's a rotary polisher and there's a dual action polisher. A rotary polisher simply spins in one direction and just grinds away. The dual action polisher actually rotates and oscillates, dual action, two movements. So if you look at with the pad on here, and then we turn the tool on, you can actually see that oscillation effect. It's a really cool look. <clears throat> so what's the benefits of that? The benefits of it is, instead of just grinding away at the paint to remove defects, these really do a excellent job by also being more gentle. So it's more of a massaging to remove defects than a grinding. So you'll see here we have four tools. <clears throat> they all work in the same way by having two actions. This one is called a 21 millimeter. What that means is it has a six inch backing plate and it oscillates 21 millimeters from center as it works. This one is a five inch backing plate. It's called a 15. And this one rotates 15 millimeters from center. And this one is a three inch and it rotates eight millimeters from center. And then we have the micro one inch polisher. So why so many sizes? So the fact of the matter is, is defects are removed by friction and constantly uh, rubbing over the surface. A lot of times you could do that by hand, but it might take you forever. You could do it with a one inch tool, it'll take you a long time. So for removing heavy defects over a large area, you're gonna wanna use the large throw machine. You can work into a little bit tighter areas using the smaller and smaller tools. So for this purpose, we're gonna demonstrate on the doors. We're gonna show you the big machine so it's easiest to see. So <clears throat> not only uh, do these tools have varying um, degrees of oscillation, but they all have a trigger speed as well. So they all run from one to six. So the faster the tool is going, the faster it oscillates, the more heat and more friction, therefore the more cutting. And again, they all have that. So, after we figure out which tool we're gonna to use, at what speed we're going to run it, then we start to talk about what pads and what buffing liquids we'll use. As you can see, we have basically the same pads, just different sizes. And color-coded here uh, for uh, how aggressive or how hard they will cut the paint. This one's very aggressive, it will remove defects very fast. It's also kind of dangerous and not good in the hands of a consumer. Uh, this is a hybrid wool microfiber. And then we have a true microfiber pad, nice and soft like a microfiber. But this is designed to cut the paint very hard as well. And actually, we do have a series here where there's a yellow foam pad in every size. It's gonna be pretty dense, pretty, th pretty thick, pretty hard. And then you move down to actually the orange pad, which will be a little bit softer. This you'll get into more polishing the paint and removing, honestly, the damage done by these. And when I say damage, what that means is to remove heavy scratches, you kind of need to cut the paint pretty hard. This will leave behind a lot of marring. And as you move down the list, you remove the, own, the marring that you did on your own. And then we have an ultra soft black pad. <clears throat> and then for our ceramic row installations, there's actually one more. Uh, even finer red pad. So now you see that there's a lot of different types of pads for different purposes. <clears throat> and then you have to choose which liquid you will use to cut the paint. So in the past, there was buffing liquids that had basically grit and you could put the liquid on your fingers and feel how gritty they were. <clears throat> now, the science is much better and we use what's called a diminishing abrasive. So no matter what liquid we're using, we always choose a diminishing abrasive. And the reason for that is, is it starts to cut immediately, but as you use it, the abrasives break down and it actually makes the process much more gentle and you're able to refine the paint using less steps. So, boy, we've got a lot of choices between liquids, pads, machines. Uh, so I'm gonna show you a little bit about how to choose which, why, when, and then how to operate the tool. So let's take you over to the car. So you may be able to see some scratches here on the paint. And today, my objective is to remove these scratches, polish the paint, and then ultimately put a nice protection back on it. So I'm choosing to remove those scratches, the 21 millimeter, along with our heavy cutting purple pad. 
and then I'm going to start using the Americana 1500 diminishing abrasive. One cool thing I didn't mention earlier is these pads are really specially designed to work with this tool and they have these holes in them which is a signature to this, to this particular pad. The reason for the holes is it helps you line up with the tool and it helps keep airflow running through the backing plate and through the pad, keeping the pad cool so you're cutting without overheating the surface. In our case, typically, you'd use much less product than this, but when first starting, you want to prime the pad. Then I always start on speed number one. I always put the machine perfectly flat and spread the, the product out nice and even. So the reason why it's spread even before you start is if you simply go ahead and put the machine on here, you'll actually be cutting harder when you begin than by the time you get to here because the product diminishes as you use it. I'm focusing on these main scratches here. So I'm going to go ahead and dial the machine up to, let's say, three to start. In most cases, four passes as I just did there is usually enough to remove surface scratches caused by washing the vehicle or improper washing or running it through a car wash. So I like to take a look at my work. You can see I started to have an impact here and it's nice and shiny, but that's just the first pass. So because I have some deeper scratches there that I'm trying to solve, I'm going to go ahead and add some more liquid. And again, rub it on the surface. There's a few characteristics of the machine that are important to note. One is pad angle, meaning if I operate the machine like this, I'm gonna have different degrees of cutting. In most cases, you wanna have it perfectly flat. The second is the speed of the machine, the speed the tool runs. The third is how hard I push down on the tool. And lastly is what's called arm speed. Arm speed is the time it takes for you to travel from shoulder to shoulder. So what I'm going to choose now is flat pad, very light pressure. I'm going to run it at about speed four, four and a half at a slow arm speed. So you may have noticed that I actually paused the pad in certain places and then actually touched it with my hand. What I was doing there was to feel for heat, to make sure that I was working effectively but not overheating the surface. And I can see now that I've achieved in a professional cut, I've removed you know, 85% of those scratches. If I look very closely, I can still see some, but as a professional, I always like to opt for doing it as safely as possible, making it so that the average person or even the, the, the detailed person cannot see them, rather than overcutting and diminishing the clear coat. So the next step would be, after I cut the paint, it would be polishing it. Let's check that out. All right, so in this case, we're gonna do a two-step polishing or compounding and polishing step. Next, I'm gonna move on to the orange pad that will remove any haze left behind by the cutting phase. This one's foam, it stays nice and cool 
I can run it uh, pretty hot, pretty fast, and still remove a little bit of defects while removing any of the buffer marring that I had caused. 10 times less is more if you're doing this at home, so don't put on too much product. And again, I dial it down to one. And just spread it on the surface. Then for polishing, I like to work around speed five and have a little bit of a faster arm speed. So even though we only did a small area, I can see a clear, more high definition look here than even as I look at myself uh, in my reflection over here. Also, I know it's gonna be tough to pick up on the camera, but I can see all of those tree brush scratches still remain here, and here, they, you cannot pick that up. The eye cannot see them. So here as I look at myself in my reflection, we really professionally compounded and polished this area to a perfect result. Thanks so much for watching this video. Stay tuned for the next video and the last video in the series, which is how to protect your paint.